Welcome back to Our Non-Talks Podcast. I'm here with a very good friend of mine. Hello. I'm Lakin. I'm so happy that you're on here. This I'm so is, excited. It's a long overdue conversation. Oh, absolutely. There's been so much that we have to talk about. Yes. I have a list. The outline for today is going to be about a mile long. Yeah. I... <laughs> I debated not sending it to you and then just like hitting you with all the questions. Oh, but God. I thought, <laughs> I'm so glad you did. I thought that wasn't fair. I have one comment before we get into your whole life story. Okay. Um, do you follow Brittany Broski by chance? Do you Absolutely. Know? Okay. Absolutely. So have you heard her talk about Cafe Bustello, the coffee? No. What is, what is that? It's just a, it's an instant coffee, but here's the kicker. Okay. It's instant espresso. <gasps> and if you don't, if you're not familiar with instant coffee, it's basically coffee that you mix with water. Like it's just quarantine. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Like yeah. different kinds of grounds little fluffier you mix it with water or milk and it makes coffee instantly most of the time though you mix it with like eight ounces of water and then you like it's a bigger scoop of coffee and it makes a whole cup right this is instant espresso so you're supposed to make like a small amount oh my god and I had one last night at like 9 p.m <laughs> I was up until three no. shaking it was like jet fuel I don't know what I had consumed but like I I had a little evening cup of coffee to wind down oh, as you creamer do. good the creamer was amazing. Okay, yes. So my husband made me homemade coffee creamer because he read something that was talking about all the different things in coffee creamer that aren't good for you. Oh. Do I know or care? No. 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 But he does. And <laughs> he made me some healthy ones. Will I continue with my other store-bought creamers? Probably. But Right. So I went ahead and made another one. I downed an Urban Grounds coffee this morning. Oh, used the cup. Um, it was actually a Hannah Hicks special. She's okay. my favorite barista. I okay. love, all, love all of them though. But it was a toffee nut latte with graham cracker milk, which mm. is like cinnamon sugar milk. Amazing. Yeah. So that was fantastic. But I didn't want to throw the cup away. So I just made myself a little coffee Bustello. Yeah. I tried special. their new, um, the mallow one, mm -hmm. the moon mallow. It has mm -hmm. the graham cracker milk. It was ooh, really good. Ooh. And I did the Lucky Charm matcha. I have I had the matcha. Love, it's so if it's this so is in your face, by the way, you can you can yeah, move the what? whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. you can do whatever I'm you like want to so do. So short. <laughs> I know you're, okay. you're just tiny and petite. You're just, just so small. small. You're just so I tiny and cute. <laughs> stand on the couch. Okay, so I first of all, I'm obsessed with you. Thank you. Is that I'm obsessed with uncomfy you. to say? Because I am. <laughs> also, I forget how much younger than me you are. I'm 21. Yes. Yes. And you are class of what in high school? Oh God. Not that that even matters. 21. I'm beautiful. I think so. I'm beautiful. Wait. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah, because 2020 was quarantine. That mm -hmm. was my junior year. Okay, yeah. 21. Oh, there's a lot more I could unpack with that, but I don't want to make you relive it. <sighs> well, we can. We have so many other things to talk about. <laughs> I know. We have so much to talk about. So my younger brother is 2020, class of 2020. Yes. Did you know him in high school? So yes, not like super. Okay, but like but of. So funny story, actually. He's the reason I follow you. Oh, really? Because I remember, you know, he was like that upperclassman that everyone was like, yeah. oh my God, Evan Long. Oh. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I, I would follow him on Instagram and I saw him like, he would post you and I'm like, who is this girl? <laughs> who is she's this? fire. <laughs> she's fire. I was obsessed as soon uh. as I saw your page. And so I think I followed you for like maybe a year or two before you followed me back. And the day you followed me back, I was, crime. Like, I was like, oh my God. No, I was, I thought you were my age for the longest time. I was like, she's so cool. <laughs> And it, you have one of those pages that I can creep on it so many times. So I'm like, it's like Pinterest to me. I'm oh, scrolling through. I'm like, I, I love this. Well, so like, is so yours. Cute. I mean, you. it, the feeling is mutual. Like, I remember when you followed me back, I was like, oh my God, guys, do you know who Hannah is? And they're like, no. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> you okay, say, okay, well, well let me put don't you Don't know. Well, Evan, yeah. so we had this like longstanding tradition of Thanksgiving outfits. Okay. And that was due to me telling him that we were about to start a tradition. Okay. So what we would do is coordinate our things. And we still do it to this day. <laughs> coordinate our outfits so that we can take a really cute Instagram photo. And he posts on Instagram like twice a year, right. maybe like one baseball photo, yep, one photo with me and, or my mother, yep. usually on Thanksgiving. So we've been doing it for like seven years. So that's why every picture on his Instagram, that's not of him playing sports is that's of you. me. <laughs> Cause I'm like, here's what we're wearing. Here's the pattern. And now I will like take him shopping because yeah. the, the fit has to be, it, it has yeah, to be new. You gotta so we have out. like a little well, tradition. We'll go shopping like right before Thanksgiving when he gets home get a whole new look. I'll send him Pinterest inspiration beforehand. Right. So he knows what the vibe is. We take a photo and then he posts it and that's it. That's his post for the year. <laughs> so he's clocked out. I love it so much. I know. Yeah. And I, I said on his podcast episode when he came on, I am deeply, deeply like prepared and ready for someone to come in and just tell him exactly what he needs to hear yeah. and do with his life. But okay, that is besides the point. <laughs> yeah. I want to hear about you. Give okay. me the lowdown on who you are. Yeah. Just your life. So, I mean, I've always grown up here mm -hmm. next to uh, Springfield area. Um, I... Grew up in a very Christian conservative household, mm -hmm. and I feel like that has a lot to do with me and who I become now. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, in high school, my parents and I, we did not have a good relationship. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when I started showing signs of anxiety and depression, they mm-hmm. were kind of like, what is that? Right. Because my mom was never taught what that was. Right. Even though she has raging anxiety. It just isn't like undiagnosed. She does. Yeah. Yes. Undiagnosed. My dad has insane ADHD. They never knew it until mm-hmm. like I came along and they're like, oh, <laughs> there's yeah. something wrong with all of us. Like we don't mess with that mental right. health shit. Exactly. Well, you know, and going to church too. And like, I'm still Christian. I still believe in God. But yeah. Going to church growing up, they were like, oh, just pray about it. Yeah. Just pray about it. Everything will be good. So that kind of, once I got to like my senior year, Mm -hmm. I really started to stop going to church and I sort of went my own way for a while and it was good. Mm -hmm. It was freeing. And it was, um, I realized a lot about myself and I, you know, I finally was officially diagnosed, medicated. It changed my life. Yeah. And so then I was like, mom. And, and you get that validation of being like, yeah, it's not just me. It's not just me. And I was like, mom, you need to get on this. Like, mm-hmm. you, you need some medication too. Um, but then, so my brother, I don't know if you know I had a brother. Mm-hmm. His name is Chandler. He, I don't know what year he graduated. I think like 2017. Mm-hmm. Um, he married a girl named Moira. Mm-hmm. And she came into our family and really taught my parents, this is what mental health is. Yeah. So she like really paved the way for That's me. That's amazing. And my sister who also has anxiety. So... That has a lot to do with, you know, how I got into writing. And Mm -hmm. I've always journaled and written down my thoughts. I've always been one to obsess, like keep like diaries, Mm -hmm. you know, throughout high school, middle school. Which I love. Even now, I still do it. I just decided to take it to the internet. And that's where my blog comes in, which I've renamed it so many times. I don't even remember what it's called right now. I think it's literally just like. We'll tag it. We'll tag it. I think it's Love Letters with Mm -hmm. Lakin or something like that. Anyways, which is adorable. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I took it to the blog and then I actually a couple of weeks ago is when I was like, you know, what, I'm going to post one of my poems mm-hmm. on Instagram, which I'd never done before. I loved it. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was like one of my favorite ones I wrote like a year ago, a year or two ago. And I never had put like poetry in my blog post before. And I was like, OK, I'm going to put it out there. Mm-hmm. I want to be a writer. Like yeah. my dream one day is to write a book. So I was like, I need to put myself out mm-hmm. there a little more. So that's how that started and yeah I mean I'm a writer I'm a book girly uh Marvel fan uh I amazing. know you are um we're gonna dive deeper I'm not oh, just letting we're you talk gonna yet. dive so deep um and also I mean that's really all you need to know about me books Marvel pop I'm such a pop music girl mm-hmm. love Taylor Swift love coffee I mean come on we have and now of, you know why yeah. you're on the podcast exactly we have so many similar interests mm-hmm. and- well I, I was seriously was diving through our dms to see all the different topics and I had to pick my favorite ones because <laughs> we're just big reply like story reply oh, friends yeah. like everything you post I'm like I have something to say yep guess what same I've got more to say yep. and all your posts I just think it's so beautiful to see someone being so authentic and that's been a big journey for me yeah. Instagram I first of all this is how old I am not that much older than you, but it feels like it. <laughs> but Instagram was invented. Like it became popular whenever I was in eighth grade. So mm-hmm. I had most of my formative years prior to that. Yeah. And then the boom happened whenever I was in high school. So I got to experience like the very beginning when you're just posting whatever you want to. Yes. No one cares. Into the blogger era, into like the curated feed era. And then now to the photo dump, no one cares. And mm-hmm. we've gone through all of these different phases. And I could do numerous episodes just talking about yeah. culture and how detrimental it is that we're all trying to be content creators but we're just following the same formula and no one is authentic anymore Mm -hmm. and I'm as guilty as anybody as for trying to do all of that myself especially working in social media and wanting to give you know a results driven yes approach to my clients but it's difficult when we're all using the same trending audios and here's the filters that perform and the fonts that perform and here's Mm -hmm. the link that should be you can't fit your whole personality and all your creativity into that bubble and Mm -mm. if you're going for likes I think you'll never achieve that like sense of self and actually getting to express yourself which is what the goal was originally Mm -hmm. but I'm not gonna get my soapbox no incredible however whenever I see people that are doing what you're doing and just completely like being authentic and expressing yourself and and being vulnerable and also just showing your hobbies and having fun I love hobbies had talked about that again so many times (laughs) but we just lose so much of that childlike whimsy in our adult life whenever you just get you know beat down by adulthood and responsibilities yeah. so just finding things that don't necessarily make you money but make you happy is like the biggest hill that I will die so on so important so with that being said I have also always loved to write but I think a lot of it came from just like not knowing how to express my emotions we have a really yes. similar story like struggling yeah. with anxiety yeah. never really knowing what to do and my family was just always very like Evan was so confident and played sports and was so outgoing yep I wasn't I didn't really get social until probably after high school like I maybe later in high school but yeah. I just didn't come into my own until way later in life and writing was a good way for me to express that, but I didn't have any friends or anything at the time. So then I always kind of associated that stage of my life with 
me writing and also being sad and depressed. So I, yes. I never really used it as an outlet beyond my deep sadness. Yeah. Not to be depressing. I've also <laughs> journaled. So yes. like yes. there's just so many things that, that hit on that. I thought we were so similar. And I, I love looking back at all these journals that I've had since college, basically, whenever I left home for the first time mm -hmm. and seeing how much I've grown and changed. And that's one of the things that has continued to make my faith so strong is seeing like all the different things that I was praying for that have been answered yeah. or not answered. Yep. But, and I also had a similar faith journey where you grow up in church and you just kind of accept it as what is, is to be believed. Then you go through life in college and you're like, oh, I don't really have to believe the same things my parents do. Mm -hmm. And then finding your own version and, you know, kind of church family. And, right, and your what, own version. Yes. Like, I, I thought I had to stick to every single thing my parents thought mm -hmm. about Christianity. But now I have a different... And your approaches. Yeah. Just, like, I have a different view on Christianity now. Oh, yeah. It's so... And it, it works for me. Mm-hmm. And how so, you pray, how yeah. you relate to God, like the kind of way, yes. the way you worship everything. And I even have like a weird PTSD with worship music because when my mom had breast cancer and then later whenever I was really struggling with depression, mm -hmm. that was something that was really heavy in my life. Yeah. So it's almost like I'm, I conditioned myself to only feel those feelings mm -hmm. when I listen to worship music. So I would love to be able to break that, but I just don't yeah. want to, I don't want to bite the bullet and start It's hard. You want to find different types of worship music, mm -hmm. like not the typical like... Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes, like, exactly. There's, I'll have to send you some, some of this. I would love that. I, That'd I be so great. I can send you. And it's a lot different from what you grew up in. Cause I kind of relate my worship to the church camps I would go to growing mm -hmm. up that were very kind of like mind control. Yeah. Like, yeah you look back and you're like, Ooh, you're like, Oh, that was not, that's like, indoctrination. They, <laughs> exactly. Like they would, they wanted you to cry like during mm -hmm. the worship sessions and right. you're like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. you just feel too powerfully and you're like, oh, yep. I don't know. Yep. Well, fortunately for me, I had too much social anxiety to go to church camp. <laughs> so I don't have any of that <laughs> trauma, it. but I get it. I get it. Okay. So what do I want to dive into first? I would like to know your report. This is a okay. fun little thing we do. Okay. It's basically what you're reading, eating, playing, obsessing, recommending, and treating yourself oh to. So okay. let's start with what are you reading? Okay. I'm reading the Throne of Glass series oh. by Sarah J. Mass. I need to dive in. You have to read it. Mm -hmm. I know you've read Crescent City and yes. Akatar. Yes. Okay. I read Akatar first Same. two years ago. I reread it last year. Mm -hmm. um, took a long break from her. Right. Uh, it's a lot. It's a it lot is a to lot. digest. Yeah, yeah. But it's so good. And she just makes you want to read more. Of her yes. Stuff. So I thought I was going to read Crescent City first, but I think it's a little too intense for me yeah, right now. I totally like, get it. Like you said, like it's really big, like fantasy. Lots politics. of world building. There's so much. And I just didn't know if I'm in the mental headspace to see yeah. through that right yeah. now. Throne of Glass is a little... Similar, I would say, in high fantasy and politics, but it's a little easier. Mm -hmm. It's a young adult fantasy series, okay. so not as much smut as an mm -hmm. actor. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but it's still, like, it's slow burn. Yeah. And it's amazing. I think I'm on the, technically, the fourth book, which mm -hmm. is called Queen of Shadows, and it's it's technically the fifth book if you've read the prequel. Okay. So the prequel is The Assassin's Blade. Mm -hmm. I read it first, and I always recommend reading it okay. first. Because it's a lot of, lot of controversy I know. about the order. Listen, I say read it first if you're very character driven reader if you like the character mm -hmm. development if you like that empowerment in a female main mm -hmm. character if you read the first one first you're gonna feel so much more connected okay. to her and it everything will make sense okay and it'll make sense in the end but read it first okay read it first good 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 um yeah that's what i'm reading loving it of course um my reading goal this year is 50 books that's crazy so this is my 13th and do you right classic now. read like you with a book or do you listen to them and count those Both. okay i have my kindle audible I think it's physical. valid some people are very opinionated about that no I I need to have all the formats I love it I love <laughs> I have it to have all the formats I didn't get into audiobooks until recently yeah. and now I get the hype yeah well my commute to work because I live in Springfield mm -hmm. is 25 minutes there 25 minutes back that's like so, a chapter yeah the chapter both ways so like I gotta read while I'm driving obviously it, it, it makes things so much easier it is a different experience like I had to train my brain to do it because I get so distracted due to my dependence on technology <laughs> so whenever I'm reading at least I'm focusing on it. like it's something I'm holding and yes. my hands are occupied I'm reading it like right. having to stare at the page mm -hmm. versus an audiobook sometimes it's difficult for me so I have to have something else that I'm doing like I don't know if most people I assume they do it when they drive and they're doing I tasks do I drive. Yes. but I couldn't just sit there and like I'm no. reading right now if, if I'm gonna sit in a coffee shop I'm gonna have the physical book yes. I'm not gonna do audio yes book. But like road trips, mm -hmm. I do a lot of road trips. So I like, love that. Gotta have the, mm -hmm. gotta have Audible. I'm doing my reread of Akatar right now. I'm on Mist and Fury, just like rereading <sighs> to get all the details. And it's similar to Marvel in that whenever you're reading it, there's so many like Easter eggs and different yes. things that you don't pick back up. Anything she writes, you have to remember because mm -hmm. it will come back. She doesn't just say things. Nope, she doesn't just yeah. say it. It's, it's not, not casual. Yeah. 
not just little ancillary details. It's all significant. And you don't realize it until you go back and read and you're like, oh my gosh. I think that's why I love Marvel so much and Akatar and Taylor Swift. I was just going to tie in Taylor all Swift. All of that, all, yeah, Taylor mm-hmm. Swift. Anything she says or does, it's intentional. Yes. And they, they plan <laughs> things out so far in advance. Like, you know, they love yes. their creations mm-hmm. and that love always translates through. And that's why I love, like, there's four movies in the Marvel franchise that were directed by the Russo brothers who like grew up reading yes. comic books. Yes. And uh, there's so much better just because, I mean, obviously Bucky, I mean, <laughs> Bucky Barnes is in all of them, yes. but also because they just care so much. Like yeah. they, they talk about how many months it takes them to like flesh out character yeah. arcs beforehand and how, how much thought goes into each and every character, like no matter mm-hmm. how big or small. And I just think it matters. It shows yeah. through. So that's why I love even like I'm a new Taylor Swift fan. Mm-hmm. I was not as much into her pop side, but yeah. I got into her with Evermore and Folklore, and then now I'm like in love with all yeah, of it. It's impossible to let go. How do you not love her? I think I've been a fan for over 10 years now. That's a big flex. And it's the first time I saw her was the Red Tour, mm-hmm. and I've seen her maybe five times since, and it's... And like, you saw Eras? Yeah. And it was amazing? I can't... I've I, seen her, the document, or the show. The sh- yeah, the movie. So many times. Yeah, it's beautiful. What are you eating these days? Do you okay. have like a <laughs> favorite snack? So my friends will tell you I'm notorious for being number one buffalo chicken dip fan. Love. It's my favorite food in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've recently been making buffalo chicken pasta. Mm-hmm. So kind of similar ingredients. You just throw like fine right. in there. Amazing. And some broth. That's, that's culinary much, queen. That's what I eat. I mean, on my way to work, I work so early. I work at 630 in the morning. Mm-hmm. So mm. I'll just have a granola bar and I make my coffee at work because we have a coffee machine in the workroom. Yep. So that's really. Get you some coffee Bustello. Exactly. Okay. Yes. I need wired. that. I actually probably do need that because it's, it's hard to get If you see me start to before. vibrate during the, the episode, <laughs> that's why. Okay. Yeah. So honestly, that's, I mean, I'd say snack wise, I'm really into peanut butter pretzels right now. Oh, <laughs> addictive. Just, the Costco, Costco has like huge, mm-hmm. it's perfect. I have a list of foods that I love to eat that I cannot buy. That, cause, <laughs> cause it's just not good. It's, it's to a point that they're, they're too, they're too like binge worthy, too snackable. Yeah. And I cannot have them in my mm-hmm. house. Gotta and nerds clusters are getting into that <gasps> category. Those are so good. <laughs> it's my favorite candy of all time. And I talk about them so much that that's like what people will just like, oh, I saw this gas station. Here you go. Oh God. And I have so many like, of them. No. And the thing is they won't last the day. <laughs> <laughs> I will eat them at 7 a.m. I'll eat They're them so at midnight. Good. Like, mm-hmm. it does not matter. I will eat them before a run. Yeah. Like, I'm talking like Dr. Seuss, but like, yeah. I literally will eat them wherever I am. And it's, I probably have a wrapper in my purse right now. Yeah. So I can't buy them anymore. Yeah. I'm putting myself in time Candy out. Candy for me, now that it's Easter, Cadbury eggs. Oh, Those that's are my controversial. Favorites. Really? Yeah. Do you like them? Thing? No. Mm. No. I like the Reese's eggs. I like the shaped ones. Oh, I love those. Yeah. So yeah, good. Love Reese's. Better than yeah. the traditional I one. I love Cadbury. Sure. That's just my thing. It's one of Not those, it's like a, like a niche thing that people, like you yes. love it. Like Peeps. Like candy corn. Yeah. I love candy I love corn. candy corn. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just straight sugar and food I don't dye. Like Peeps. Yeah. I, I'm with you on that okay. one. Okay. I'm I'm neutral. Like I don't hate them. Right. But, but like, I would not go for that. No. I'll, I'll have like a third it. Reese's egg before I have a right. peep. But okay. What are you playing these days? Music. Okay. Music. Lots of pop, obviously. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm always listening to Taylor Swift, obviously. What's on repeat right now for you? <sighs> Olivia Rodrigo. Love her. Um. Her new deluxe yes. of guts. Yes. So American. I am, yeah, that's obsessed, beautiful. Obviously. I'm I'm obsessed with obsessed. I'm obsessed with obsessed. And it feels a little strange because I'm a married 25 year old and I'm listening to it and I'm thinking I'm so about obsessed like obsessed with your ex. Yes. I'm like, oh my gosh, like that. I'm like, I love this it. is me right now. Yeah, literally. I haven't had an ex in a year. Singing, yeah, literally. <laughs> singing about getting back, all these things. And yeah. just her music is so it brings me back to this nostalgic like 2000s place yes. of, like jumping on your bed in your childhood bedroom yeah. and I love it and it comes on yeah. in spin classes that I do and I'm mm-hmm. like jamming out on the bike it's just incredible I listened to it yesterday oh, and Ariana Grande sorry oh classic yeah. I was just thinking because she has her new album her new songs and whenever Seven Rings came out I vividly remember because I was like in the thick of college like in my going yeah. out era and I remember all of my friends like the group chat was going crazy that oh, day yeah. And hearing all of these songs like in my head, like, boy, I invented you. I said, that's my new motto. Yep. Me didn't invent anybody. <laughs> didn't like invent that, anybody. Yeah. Don't want you in my bloodline. I felt that. <laughs> I felt that. It was, it's it was formative. Iconic. That's one of her best albums still. I do want to pivot on playing because you are a gamer as well. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. I actually, I will admit, I haven't played The Sims 4 in a good while. Yeah. Because I've been so busy. Yeah. And I kind of go through phases where I'm either playing Sims 24-7 or I'm reading 24-7. Right. And right now I'm in the reading phase. So that's on hold for a little bit. We will come back eventually. Right. But I got a Nintendo Switch for Christmas. So that's what I've been into. Animal Crossing is what I'm doing. I love it. Um, I really only have two games on there. I have Animal Crossing and the Bratz game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so is- 
Brass iconic. Pink. Yes. Yeah. You have to have it. It's so funny. You just you literally just dress them up. Like, that is so cute. Quests. Animal Crossing is fun. It's it's very chill. It's um, I don't know what you could really relate it to. It's it's not meant to be a stressful game. You know, which I love. It's just like trading and buying and crops and mm-hmm. like you're making your own island. And I you're love inviting it. People to live on your island. And mm-hmm. It's so chill and it's so calming. That actually really helps with anxiety. Yeah. A little bit of escapism. So, that's what I'm I've saying. I've always loved The Sims, especially like whenever I found out you could get cheat codes. I'm just yep. cheat coding through. I don't, uh, I don't play the it cheats. the real way. Yeah. Mother load. Mother load. Over I wish and I could over. Mother load my way through life. Like, I, I know. Think that all I know. The time. I'm like, if I could just. If you marry right, you can. <laughs> real. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> real. But it's just, it's such a fun game because you can actually customize it. And like growing up, whenever I was not very social, like I would not talk to a soul all day mm-hmm. at school, come home have the most like lively Sims life. It was so much mm-hmm. fun. I used to just yeah. go crazy for it, but I haven't played in a long time and I don't think that I have enough like CPU storage <laughs> to download it with all my files. So I dropped out of school mm-hmm. and so my computer now is strictly for Sims. Yes. I don't put anything else Oh, amazing. I so I it. have so much room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I actually love to hear that. Yeah. I mean- Hobbies are hobbies are key. Yeah, hobbies are key to an enriched life. I think absolutely because we just stop them. We have this whole narrative that everything has to either like make you more fit, make you more money, mm-hmm. further your career. You don't have to monetize everything. Well, and you also think about, you know, oh, um, like life was so much better as a child, mm-hmm. and in ways it was. Yeah, but in reality, just bring back what you were doing. All the fun child. things. Yeah, Cause, like because now I you have read the money a lot as a kid, <laughs> to do them. I'm doing that now. Yes, like I played these simulation games as a mm-hmm. kid. Do it now. It's like exact- there's draw. No sh- draw. Like, I love it. I just yes. go back to drawing, and I'm like, I don't even care if it's good. Like it's just fun and therapeutic. Right. Like just making crafts for fun. Mm-hmm. And every time I get into a new hobby, there's always somebody who's like, you should do this. Like you should sell this. Like whenever I was crocheting shirts last summer, yeah. that was like my hyper fixation. And everyone's like, you should do this. I'm like, I don't want to sell them because no, then it takes the fun it's away. A hobby. Yeah, and and I have. Social media was a hobby that turned into a business Mm -hmm. and I'm so thankful for that. But at the same time, it takes, it changes the love that you have and the ability that you have to express yourself through it. So there are times I just don't want to be on social media because it also reminds me of work. With that being said, I want to have hobbies that are completely independent. Like I don't want to, I love fitness, but I would never want to be anyone's trainer or like get any kind of certification. I want it to be completely separate, Mm -hmm. which is, I think the key. Like yeah. you, you just have to have things that are completely like there's no pressure to them if you don't pick it up. Like for you, if you don't pick up Sims for two more months, right? No pressure. No pressure. It's no big deal. No one's waiting on me. Once you put obligate, maybe your Sims are. Maybe they. Okay. But, maybe they are. Hopefully they're good. Yeah, it's like your Nintendo dogs that are just like <laughs> <laughs> they've all run away. <laughs> like, did you ever play Webkins? Yes. Oh, I love Webkins. I love Webkins. I, I miss it. I found I was a scammer because I used to just go and like type in all these codes until you would get one. Like, no. yeah, for hours. Like, I would just oh go and, like, type in all these fake codes, trying, and then maybe maybe one. One out of, like, all the hours that I spent would hit, and I would get, like, a free. Wow. What are they called? Like, those those goose-looking things? What are those? I don't know. What are those? But I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, I wish I tried that. Yeah, that's how I knew I was, like, shady at a young age. <laughs> but it was good. I think it may be entrepreneurial. Yeah. What are you obsessing over these days? Any characters? Any? Well, Throne of Glass. Yeah. Like, I, I haven't been able to shut up about it on my Instagram. I love it. Um... Once you read it, you'll understand. But well, the Selena, thing I've been going Sardothian, through, Sardothian. Like I, whenever I'm running, I think I am Selena Sardothian. Yes. Like whenever I'm working a shift, I'm like I am Selena Sardothian. Like you have to. You just I have love to it. Be that character. I had that whenever I was reading um, a Court of Silver Flames with Nesta, <gasps> who I love. I'm a Nesta apologist, but I think that I read Akatar because mm-hmm. like, everyone was like, "You gotta read it," and I was like, yeah. "How good can it be? Great, <laughs> great, yeah, great." And then I wanted to read. Fourth Wing and Iron Flame, mm. and also Crescent City because I knew that CC3 was coming out. So I read all those super, super quick. And I re- and probably from, I don't know, like October to January, I read all of them. Like Which all- I'm impressed how you read those back to back to back I, because that's a lot. It was a lot, but I read Crescent City on vacation, so there was nothing else like occupying my brain. Right. And even then I was like, why are people talking about this? It's not that good. Like it's so overwhelming. But once you get into it and you start to care about the characters, yes. then it's better. It yes. just It is a lot to bite off at the beginning. You have yep. to kind of take it slow. But maybe like use a YouTube video for supplement right. to like get to know what's going on. I really, my goal is to read those. This they, year. they are really good. Like and I need to. It's really interesting. And it's a whole combination of fantasy with like modern technology, which mm-hmm. you don't think that you're going to like. And then you end up really? liking modern it. Really? Modern technology? Mm-hmm. Like there's cell phones, I but there's also no like that. magic. Which what? is at first I, I That's thought. That's so different from what she used to write. I know. Writes, mm-hmm. So I'm curious. It's, it is. I think it's, there's such good books. And like you do get very attached to them. But I think it, it's just a different kind of like mental energy yeah. that's required of you yep. but I read everything so quickly that I want to go back through and reread it because I think I was just so invested I was devouring mm-hmm. them and didn't really take the time mm-hmm. to like enjoy it 
So now I want to go back and well, yeah. Fourth everything. Wing was one of my favorite books of the year. It was so. But good. now like I have to like remember what okay what even happened mm-hmm. in, the last, in the two books because whenever yes. she announces the third, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to reread. I have a hard time pacing myself. Like yeah. Austin will order a milkshake, gone in 45 seconds. That's me with media. Yep. So I cannot make yeah. anything last. Hello. If you notice an awkward <laughs> gap, it's because we keep having technical difficulties due to Apple making a horrible product. I'm yeah. just kidding. I love my iPhone. I will never go back. But we keep having storage issues due to me never deleting anything in my life. So thanks for being Bye. a patient guest. Of we were talking about your report. We went through books. We could go through books forever. Okay. But it is important, I think, to have a character that you can project yourself into whenever yes. you're doing things that you don't want to do. Mm-hmm. For example, working out. Yep. Last night I was lifting and I was like going so hard because I was listening to a playlist called The Winter Soldier Energy. And I'm like, guess what? Amazing. I'm an assassin. Yeah. I'm feeling violent. I'm going to go lift. And I'm super sore. Like, can't straighten my arms today. <laughs> Worth it. It was great. Worth it. But you have to have something where you can just, like, channel someone that's cooler than you. Yep. And then eventually, you know, you, exactly. you hope that it will stick. But mm-hmm. usually a new hyperfixation takes its place. So. Oh, yeah. What are you recommending to people these days? Olive and June nails. Love. Always. Hype girl. I, I will never stop recommending these. They are $10 at Target and Walgreens. Mm -hmm. And I don't even remember when I first found these. I think I started using their polish. They look so good. I love them, you guys. And it's all in the application. Mm -hmm. Let me just say, because my friends will use them. They'll be like, why won't they stay on me? And I'm like, you're not doing it right. You said it's operator error, actually. Exactly. It's not me. It's you. It's not me. It's Mm -hmm. you. Um, No, but I uh, buy these every two weeks because they last me two weeks. Yes. And my parents, like for Valentine's Day, got me like five pairs. Oh, <laughs> I love it. They know well, me. they're always so beautiful. Your nails are always so well done. Thank you. I have like the shakiest, most like uncoordinated fine motor skills. Like yes. I cannot, I cannot do anything that's like yeah. fine and yeah. small. So I get them done and that is how it's going to have to I stay. I if, think, yeah. If I, I could swing it. I cannot <laughs> get my nails done. It makes me nervous. I hate sitting there. Yeah. I will have a panic attack. Yeah, I, I do get so, that. Yeah. The press ons really, all of a June, please sponsor me because I love yeah. you guys. Yeah. And I post you all the time. Yeah. You're like, please, I'm begging you. They like will comment on my post and DM me all the time. And I'm like, okay. You're like, run me my check. Literally. Come on. <laughs> Literally. Because I've gotten so many people on them. Mm-hmm. Keep one a spreadsheet. Day. Send yeah. it to him. Send him a, yeah. for, a formal proposal. Hey. <laughs> I know. Yeah, one day. That's me yeah. like all my, because fa- I tag everything just for fun because you never right. know what's going to happen. You never know. And I'm always like, come on guys, like I, I've sent so many links, no Please. commission, like I just, just sharing. Okay. What are you treating yourself to these days? Um, a new book here and there. Mm-hmm. Always. I mean, coffee, I always buy myself too much coffee. Like my yeah. dad is like, you need to stop buying coffee yeah. every day. And I'm like, I don't do it every day. He said day. it's the little things in life. It's the, if I get a treat every day, mm-hmm. that keeps me going. Yeah. And just to know, like, okay, I'm going to go, maybe I'll get a coffee after this. I think you should. I think I should. You came, this is a difficult thing to this do, is, to sit and you, talk. You're right. Yeah. I think I might have to. That's me every time. I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh, it's so taxing <laughs> to podcast. Yeah, going so. to get another coffee. Yeah. But I, I was proud because I got my coffee and then I made a home coffee. So I'm balanced out. Everything is great. Exactly. I've set the limit at buying more than one a day. So I will okay. buy one if I'm out and I will not buy a second. Because for a while I was getting too crazy with it. Yep. Like, oh, life is short. Like, whatever. I said, no, that is too far. It's, yeah. You got to stop. It really adds up. Okay, that's your report. That's amazing. I, that's my favorite thing to do. I feel like that's the fastest that way to like, get to know somebody. I don't want to know your star sign. Like, I want to know your right. report. So what books got you into reading? Like, did you have a formative series when you were younger? Okay, yes. Um, in fourth grade, I think I read The Hunger Games for the first mm-hmm. time, which is crazy to yeah. be reading at fourth grade. Yes. Double. But um, yeah, I should not have been reading about that. Okay. <laughs> but it happens. So The Hunger Games, Percy Jackson, mm-hmm. um, Harry Potter. Of course. Obviously. Staple. That was mine. Uh, Oh, Divergent. I never read those. I should have. Oh. I should have. I was into a series called Maximum Ride, which is like okay. about winged kids, oh, okay. which did come out to play into my adult life with Akatar. But it was a good series. It was just lesser known. Yeah. It was by James Patterson, and I loved it. But that was what took place of what could have been like Divergent mm-hmm. era. So yeah. I read Hunger Games and all of that. Yeah. But. So I read all that. So it was like dystopian. Mm-hmm. When I was in like third grade, though, it was this series called The Land of Stories, mm-hmm. which is a fantasy series. And this guy, I can't remember his name, but he was on Glee. Mm-hmm. He wrote these books. I'm going to have to Google it after this. He wrote Please these books. follow up with me. His name is Chris. What's his last name? Oh, um. The actor. like Chris. Like Colfer. Is it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He plays um Kurt. Yes. Yes. I did not yes. know he wrote he anything. Wrote the books, The Land of Stories. And I read Good them. Good to know. I read them in elementary school. And that's kind of what opened me up to fantasy. Because it was like this storybook world. And yeah. These kids get sucked into a storybook. Mm-hmm. And My dream. 
Yeah, but that's, that's me. What, yeah. <laughs> waiting to get sex to a story since I was like a kid. Me. My life has been oh my waiting. God. I was waiting for a Hogwarts letter. Mm -hmm. Never came. Mm -hmm. Waiting to get recruited to the X-Men to go live in, at that school. Yep. Was waiting to, what was next after that? I think maybe I was actually like had friends at that point. So maybe I wasn't waiting at <laughs> something then. Was waiting to get recruited to the Avengers still. Yep. I'm like, where's Nick Fury? Please Literally. call me. I'm like, have, have no skills. Same. Like if I ever got recruited, what would I do? Personality hire. Overthink. <laughs> Overthink. <laughs> Overplan. They need that. But True. Yeah. But you have to have a little bit of that like, oh, I could be the hero. I could be the hero. I mean, you're telling me all these 17-year-old girls are saving the world in books and I couldn't do it? Exactly. I've got eight years on Feyre. True. I could do it. You could do it. You I could do, do it. it. And I could read, girl. I could read. <laughs> yes. Check me. Yeah. Okay. So I always think that your formative piece of media like leaves such an impact on your your personality. Yeah. Like I remember the main character of these Maximum Ride books. They are – she's just like a wisecracking, like really sarcastic person. And I learned what sarcasm was through her personality. And I think mm -hmm. I just adopted that. And I'm like, that's going to be me. And then I've been tweaking it with like – some Laura like Gilmore, yeah. like some Ugh. Tony Stark here. And that's just where the personality comes from. So is there anyone that you can like point to and say like, that's where, you, that's me. Oh my God. There, uh, it's hard because I've consumed so much media. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have a little bit of Paris in mm -hmm. me from Gilmore yep. Girl, Girls. Love Paris. Um, God. It's tough. I, I don't know. I don't know. I think just an amalgamation of everybody. Yeah, it just I think that every book I've read, every movie I've seen, every show I've watched, there's a little piece of me in all of mm -hmm. it. And I think that the media I have consumed has made me who I am right. today, which is good and bad. But I love it. I think it's great. <laughs> and yeah. I think it's you can't think of it as a bad thing or no. What are you going to do about it now? Unread right. those books. Right. So it's good to think of all the good things that they've imparted on mm -hmm. you. And at least your vocabulary is, mm -hmm. is bigger, if nothing else, because you read oh, all these you books. you know what? Jackie from That 70s Show. Love. Okay. That's a great combination. Yeah. Paris and Jackie. Paris and Jackie. So a yeah. spoiled. I love it. <laughs> have the attitude. Mm -hmm. um, but I also have a drive. Like, yeah. You know, and that's where I turn to like the, the main characters in the fantasy books. Mm -hmm. Like I have their drive and... When I read about them, they empower me mm -hmm. and they make me want to empower others. So. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, I think it's so interesting because I think a lot of authors don't realize that you're writing somebody that, of course, just comes from your brain and your own thoughts and feelings, but that could become an icon to somebody else. Like Hermione Granger, I had so many aspirations because of her mm -hmm. growing up and that was just someone that an author came up with, which yeah. is so crazy to think because they almost have been so personified to me that I feel like I like it's a friend. Yeah. So I just have so much admiration for people who create characters like that, that just become a staple of your life. Me too. Question. Were you chronically online growing up or were you like, did you have family computer access just completely unrestricted? Right. So we had family computer access. Um, I would mostly play club penguin. Mm -hmm. Um, but like I said earlier, I grew up in a very strict household. Yeah. yeah. So media was somewhat restricted. We were not allowed to listen to like secular music. Oh, so they Taylor Swift was like one of the ones they deemed like appropriate acceptable, yeah. even though now she's not really right right <laughs> and listening to those songs back like my parents are probably like oh my god yeah um but yeah she was deemed acceptable in our household and then it was all Christian music yeah. it was all Christian music we and so like whenever I got into junior high and high school I was like oh my god there's so much out there that I don't know it's a whole new world because I I never had tumblr I, well, I, I was on it a little bit, but not yeah. as much as I was on Instagram mm -hmm. or Twitter or... Of course, yeah. Musical.ly. Right. But I was a Wattpad girl, mm -hmm. which, you know, obviously is obviously. a pipeline to now. That's exactly where I was going with this. Mm -hmm. Big Wattpad girl. Um, it was mostly like One Direction fan fictions. Naturally. Of course. Um, your name, like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Throw your hair in a messy um, bun. <laughs> and then also, me and my sister were big 21 Pilots fans. So we yeah. read a lot of their fan fictions. I which... love that you share that with someone because usually that's something that goes into the vault and you're nope. like, don't tell I, anybody. No shame. Mm -hmm. we, me and my friends loved 21 Pilots. When mm -hmm. we were in seventh grade, we were insufferable about mm -hmm. it. Like We would dress up as them for Halloween. I love that. We, we saw them in concert. We would like, oh, it was actually really embarrassing. But because like I had like an emo phase where, right. you know, them, Melanie Martinez, Halsey, mm -hmm. um, I, in eighth grade, begged my mom to let me dye my hair blue. Right. She let me. Crazy. Crazy. Wow. I know. It was crazy. Out of character. Very out of character for her, but I think they knew it was important to me during yeah. that time. This was also like when I started. Like either you're going to do it 
or you're exactly do it. this is also when i started showing signs of anxiety and depression they're like okay we're just gonna let her do yeah. whatever if we give her blue hair we don't have to give her xanax exactly but the hair was the hair was green for like a year Oof. and so that was when i went in to get my hair done for the first time and we had to bleach it and like that started like the whole okay i've been blonde forever or whatever not blonde right now mm-hmm. but anyway big twin on pilots fan still am yeah don't post about it as much but i still love but it's him. like in your heart it's It'll in never my go heart away. like yeah. i actually um they just announced a tour today and my friend has sent it to me and she was like you have oh to go God. yeah for old <laughs> time's sake and like my dad loves them too mm-hmm. so i said to my oh. dad he's like he sent me a I just got my dad like, into the 1975. Oh, yes. <laughs> so I, I sent him um, <laughs> about you, and he's like, this is, this is pretty good. I said, I know. Well, and my dad I loves know. Taylor Swift. Beautiful. Like, he goes to the concerts with us. Aww. He's obsessed with her. He's I like, love that. He's like, man, she just, she just does it all. She does. <laughs> That's what I mean. I'm like, if you're hating her, you're trying to. Like, you're, you're trying you're to find trying something to. to dislike. Right. Like, she's kind. She's a hard worker. She's a lyrical genius. Like, yep. she's a good pr- Everything. She's a good person. She puts on a, a three-hour show. Like, mm-hmm. you just, if you're looking for things to dislike, of course, you'll always find them, but I'm like, you're really reaching. You're really reaching. I, I get if you're not like a huge fan of her music or it's not your thing, but you can't just you say have she's to bad. Respect her. Yeah, you like, can't say she's ugly. You can't say she's bad. Mm-hmm. You can't say she like it got lucky. Mm-hmm. I I'll go to war. I will go to war. For I'll write her, an essay. Obviously, I, I'm not like I said. I'm a new Swifty. And you I will, still will. Yeah, <laughs> it just it just makes me mad. It makes me mad. Okay, too. I also didn't have a Tumblr growing up. I wanted okay. to be a Tumblr girl just like through the little bit of exposure that I had. But I was like between eras because I was too young to really be in the big Tumblr wave. Yes. But I was old enough to like be aware of it when it was. So I was always kind of between like I had Wattpad like on my iPod touch and I don't know. I just, I knew of all these things, but it was never something I discussed. And now I'll drop little like Easter eggs in conversation. Like, oh yeah, this fan fiction. And people are just like, oh yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. And <laughs> I've just been like sprinkling it throughout my life and right. like talking about it online. And I think people are just like, all right okay. and move on but you just don't really discuss it like even now like I have a tumblr no one has it I have a tumblr too that's personal but yeah no. it's like not my name it's like a fake mm. yeah like a pseudonym mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. one's gonna that's for me yeah. that's my space yeah. and people just don't understand the culture that comes with being such an intense fangirl about things like it's not just something you lol and post about like it consumes you it consumes you which is it's good. very it's good but it can be scary it can be scary whenever you kind of lose sight of reality, but as long as yeah. you get like a pinprick of light of like your actual <laughs> life, I think it's okay. Sometimes I lose it. <laughs> Speaking of, <laughs> um, I always talk about celebrity crush tears. Who are okay. your celebrity crushes? Oh my God. Ross Lynch. Amazing. Um, what's his name? Lucky Blue Smith, which mm-hmm. Tumblr era. Um, he was big on Tumblr in 2014. He was a model. He was like one of those like American Eagle models. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do you follow Nara Smith on TikTok? No, I she, think so. You haven't seen her? Uh-uh. Oh my God. So she is married to Lucky Blue Smith. Uh huh. And she's also a model. That's how they met. They have like three kids together. Oh, probably um, beautiful. She makes she makes these cooking videos on mm-hmm. TikTok. She makes everything from scratch. She'll be like, "My kids woke up this morning and we're craving cinnamon toast crunch, so I decided to get started on cinnamon tro- toast crunch." She makes the milk. She makes the cereal. Couldn't be me. She makes cheese when she does lasagna. She makes the pasta. And like it's kind of a meme, but also I love her, and yeah. I will defend her to the day I die. Like I love her. Her husband is so hot. I mean, more power <laughs> to her, but I could never. Yeah. So like store bought, store bought's great store, for me. Store bought. I'm good. I'm, That'll suffice. I'm not making my own. Yeah. Whatever. Um. Yeah. Me like, making nerds clusters in my basement. Could <laughs> 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 be impossible. <laughs> impossible. Yeah. I bet she would do that. I'm sure uh, there's a way. I'm gonna make. The, I'm gonna leave a comment. Yeah. And see if she does it. Um. No, but. What was I gonna say? Oh. Lucky Blue Smith, he's so hot. Do you know who that is? Mm-mm. Okay, you need to look him up after this. I'm, I'm aging then, myself. <laughs> Ross Lynch, always. Um, I can't think of it. That's solid. Right now. I'm kind of between tier ones. Tier one is like the crazy obsession, you know, and yeah. I'm just between, which is good. Yeah. I'm thinking clearly, everything's normal, but it you never know when like a new one's gonna hit you or you know you like you see a piece of media and you're all of a sudden like just like a random tiktok from a show you've never it, seen it could be an edit i'm like i have to watch you're a show like, who is that man? now i have to watch nine seasons of criminal minds because i saw this one edit it's always right. something so that happened to me last year whenever i was watching the movie now you see me okay again i've seen it many times yes watched it i said oh jesse eisenberg this is gonna be a problem for me <laughs> yeah that was short-lived yeah. luckily then i was going back through like Marvel TikTok saw an edit of Sebastian Stan as Winter Soldier. I've seen him before. That for some reason I was like, this is He will always be This is gonna be bad. On my roster. And and he should be. Uh, Yeah. And he should be. I've been making conversions for years now, which is good. Yep. Okay. What we're gonna do now is get deeper. So (laughs) I could talk about all this stuff all day, but we have you only for a short amount of time. But we talked about hobbies and how fun it is to have them and being more open with your 
hobbies like reading fan fiction, however much that might occupy your time, which we're not going to go into, but playing Sims, playing Animal Crossing, reading, doing all these things that could be, they're just not as popular, mm-hmm. I feel like, as they, as other things are. Yep. Or they have recently become more popular or more widely accepted. And I think there's a huge double standard between having these weird hobbies and if you were like, say a boy that was maybe not so cute or even a girl that was not conventionally attractive, yep. there's just a huge social stigma with all of that. And I think it's so sad because a lot of the behaviors that I have now are the exact same as me in sixth grade, but I looked like Sean White back in the day. <laughs> and like I said, I had no friends. And that's not like a joke or like a set in jest. Like I literally did not, I was so uncool and mm-hmm. it's like nothing has changed. Mm-hmm. Like my personality has not changed. I'm more outgoing now, obviously. Yeah. But my interests are the same. The things that I like fill my time with, all of that is the exact same. But when you become more like conventionally attractive in the standards that are mm-hmm. popularized, I think that it's all of a sudden like, oh, that's so cool. Versus yes, you see other people online who are made fun of or teased or you know their accounts never go anywhere because maybe they don't fit what the world thinks is cool. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I have a lot to say about this, especially... Working with kids, I work with like kindergarten and fourth, and I've worked with fifth and sixth graders before, Mm -hmm. and a lot of those students have the same um, interests as me. Mm -hmm. They get made fun of for it. Yeah. And I see that on a daily basis. Right. And yeah, I've definitely had people say to me before like, oh, you don't look like someone who would game. Yeah. Oh, you don't look like someone who reads a lot. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't look like someone who would even be smart. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I get that a lot. It's like the blonde stigma. Exactly. And so I... Being a teacher-ish is what I do. I try to, you know, tell those girls that remind me of me. Like, it's okay to have these interests. Like, it's it's cool. I don't really know where I'm going with this. But, like, I, for example, I love Star Wars. Yeah. And, and Marvel. Mm-hmm. And people don't, they think it's cool when I tell or them. Or they think that you can't really like it because. It, or it's either, it's yeah. either, oh, that's really cool. Or, oh, you don't know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. And I'm like, you just no. think someone's hot. I'm like, no, but I, I grew up watching Star Wars with my brother. Like, mm-hmm. I, I love Star Wars. Like, I yeah. can tell you anything about it. And exactly. they're, like, they're like, okay, name this. And I like school them on it. Yeah, of like, course. They're like, oh. But it's, it's it, And I know this is like world's smallest violin. Like, there are real problems. I get it. But also, this is a podcast. This isn't like a right. presidential debate. <laughs> but I think it's just so interesting because I've been on both sides of it. And I feel like exactly what you just said. People either are like, like, you're into that kind of thing. Like, you read comic mm-hmm. books. Or they're like, okay, like you read comic books, like name mm-hmm. five of their songs kind of thing. And nobody, right. nobody takes it seriously. It's like, why is, why are there's, why is there a mutual exclusion between wanting to maybe like feel pretty and dress up and dress girly and do all these things, but also liking things that are not fitting to the, the mold of what people think that you should exactly. have. And also why is it cool for someone if they look a certain way, but it, it's not cool for somebody else. And mm-hmm. I don't know, I could, I could go on about that, but I just think it's so sad. And I'll see people on TikTok where, you know, you, you're like the 10th person to see the video and like their accounts just get no traction. And then I see a, like a cosplayer or a girl who's like a beautiful, like super attractive girl making the same kind of content. And, and they're getting so many yeah. views. Exactly. And I get it. Like every, we're, we're all shallow by nature. Like you yeah. want, you want to see pretty people. We exactly. all do. But it just makes me sad to think like, it's okay to enjoy your interests, but only based on how you look. Exactly. No, I agree with that. Especially, um, when I was in high school, I would consider myself, I was very social. Mm-hmm. I would say like, you know, I hung out with the popular kids, Mm -hmm. whatever, but I still had all those interests and they were still the same. And, you know, I, I don't know if this makes me sound like a bad person, but I felt bad for the other people in my classes who would have the same interests as me. And I would talk to them about like a book or a video game Mm -hmm. or something. And, and no one else really cared about what they had to say, Yeah, but they would listen to me, Mm -hmm. but they didn't care about what they had to say. Yeah, exactly. And so in high school, actually, my senior year, I started getting more involved in theater because mm-hmm. my best friend Kennedy did theater all throughout high school, and she would always get, like, the main leads, and of she course. was so, so talented, and I kind of joined her in on that, and my friends were like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I love this. Yeah. I love this, and I, I would do, like, the behind the scenes for it, and I did makeup for the shows, and so I fun. enjoyed it so much, and people hate on theater kids all you want. They are the actors you watch on your screen. Yeah. Now. How do you think they started? Exactly. Guess what? You see them them on their like fedoras see, and they step out. Like you know that's a theater kid in their heart. That's and soul. a theater kid. Yeah. And you gotta you gotta have respect mm-hmm. for them. Tom Holland did ballet. Literally. D- did musicals. Like, yeah. Come on, you, you just think that he's Spider Man all the time? No. 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 
No, they're all actors, and yeah. they're all kind of cringy. Yeah, if you watch enough of the press conferences, exactly. like, you know, <laughs> you know, no matter how much you love them, like you're gonna see it and be like, ooh, yeah. like it'll it'll cold water right in your crush. And immediately. you know, and you see all these um, men and women, but you mm -hmm. see typically a lot of men like sexualizing these um, women actresses, like Margot Robbie, and yeah. that's the whole thing about Barbie and everything. Right. Um, and it's like those women were in your high school mm -hmm. at theater practices, yeah. like practicing their acting skills yes and then just because now they've grown into themselves and like they have resources and money and all of these things mm -hmm. and it's like oh well now it's cool because now it's cool because she's super hot but it wouldn't have been cool if she was just putting in a play mm -hmm. 15 years ago 20 years ago mm -hmm. i don't know that's yeah. it's just very sad. It's sad like to have the same interests as like a guy who has never had a girlfriend in his life like a 30 year old man who lives <laughs> That's it's, me. Yeah, <laughs> me out of my core. I know. That's who I relate to the most. Like if yes. I if I I used to work at a bank and I would get along so well with all of like the tech guys and everything because yeah. I'm like they're the only ones that like the same things that I do. And don't get me wrong, that makes me sound like such a pick me being like, oh my gosh, like girls just don't get me. <laughs> I love girly things too. Yeah. I love girly things. I love same. women. I love all of these things. Love I, the bows. I am like other girls, and yes. I'm proud of that. I do have another side that's mm -hmm. a little bit more niche. So yeah. it's fun to get to talk to people that you relate to but that's always made me a little bit sad to yeah. think about so oh, that's and that's another thing though like I feel like people have told me like oh like you're just trying to be different mm -hmm. no I just love these things I just love these things and I'm not afraid to talk about them yeah exactly that's, that's the difference like I am not afraid to talk about it I think it's good with book talk being so popular because before and it's not that reading was ever uncool but it just right. didn't have like as much of a wave outside mm -hmm. of the reader culture, yeah. reader community as it has now. And now it's so mainstream of people who just have never liked fantasy or getting into it and realizing the appeal. So I think it is kind of normalizing being so invested yeah. in these fantasy worlds, which I think is a good thing. I love it. But, I love and and some people are, they're more like of a gatekeeper and they want to say like, I've been reading since I was this old. I've been reading all this. <laughs> it's like, well, that's cool. But do you not want more people to be involved? You, right. Like you, I want people to see my interests. Mm -hmm. I will push it on you. Yes. More than I should. Yes. And I, and I am also that way. Yes. And people probably flee from me because of it, but I'm not going to hide it. Why would you? Because also, like, amazing. You can see somebody in a coffee shop reading Akatar. You can tell the cover. You go over there. Literally, I'm like, that book is really It's a good. friend immediately. Like, in the airport, yeah. I've done that, too. Whenever you sit down and you're like, oh, my gosh, like, yeah. that's fourth wing. Like, yep. you, you have a whole conversation because of it. So. It's amazing. Okay, we're going to jump into okay. another topic because, again, time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, So, the reason that I had asked you to be on this podcast was because I saw a story of yours where you were talking about reclaim or TikTok. TikTok? What was it? It was both. It was probably it was both, both, yeah. But it was a video where you just talked about reclaiming your life mm -hmm. and overcoming anxiety and pursuing your running goal. And I just want to talk about all of that because I think yeah. coming into spring, I just did a whole episode last week on anxiety and like my personal struggles with it. And I think it's so interesting. So I want to hear your take, what's going on, everything. Yeah. So this, that whole social media rant came out of me coming back from spring break. Mm -hmm. I went on spring break with my group of best friends and we were obviously consuming a lot of alcohol of course. on the beach. Yes. And I kind of hit this point where I was like, what am I doing with my life? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. The I, anxiety. The anxiety, but at an all time high. Yeah. I was crying so much and I was mm -hmm. like, why am I crying on the beach? Yeah. What is going on? And I think, you know, I had this conversation with my friend Georgia one night um, at our house over break. And I, my anxiety has been always so bad to the point where I'm asking my friends, do you guys hate me? Like, I yeah. think no one actually likes me. Mm -hmm. And it got to the point where she was like, like in. Like, you have to stop asking us this. The only reason you think everyone hates you is because you hate yourself. Mm -hmm. so I was Oof. like, oh. <laughs> I was Oof. like, oh, you're right. She was so right. Because I think I'd gotten to a point where I was only trying to please everyone else, mm -hmm. only trying to check on everyone else right. that I forgot about myself. Wow. And I just was not taking care of myself at all. Um I was going through the motions. I was doing the same thing every day. I was not taking a jump at like, okay, I want to start this business or I want to start this hobby. I want to start that podcast. Like mm -hmm. it, I was being lazy mm -hmm. and I'll admit that I was being so lazy. I was not making the money I should have. I was calling into shifts and like just not doing what I could be doing for myself mm -hmm. in its purest form. And so the running thing for me, um, I used to run when I was in seventh grade and eighth grade and mm -hmm. high school. I did cross country. I was really good at it. Okay. I was so good at it. Love. I would win races. I was like, yes, Woo. it's amazing. Um, 
I stopped working out as much because I got lazy Mm -hmm. and also I became anemic. So my iron levels were lower. And so it became hard to keep up with that physical activity. Mm -hmm. But after spring break, I just decided like, I remember it was just like a sunny day. I was like, I'm going to go on a run. Mm -hmm. And my friend Emily, she is doing this like a mile a day for a hundred days. And I was like, maybe I should just do that. Like what? Like I could just start it and see if it's for me. And so I did it. And I, unfortunately I had to take a couple of days off cause I got sick Yeah, and I'm not going to run while I'm sick. Yeah. But so I did my day three today and it really, it, I know this, but it shocks me every time I do physical activity and how much better I feel mm-hmm. afterwards. It, but it still surprises me every time. I know. I'm like, I still get that. And I know it. I'm like, whoa, like I've done this before, but it feels so fresh mm-hmm. every time. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, that is just one step I'm taking towards tackling my depression, anxiety and tackling the thought of like, I'm not good enough. Um, I'm not, I don't have a future. Cause that's something I think about a lot. Like, oh my God, like, yes, I have like these talents and these hobbies that I can make into something more, but can I actually do this? Mm-hmm. And it's so scary. Yeah. But you just gotta, like, you literally just have to take the first step. Of course. And like the, the only way to get from, Oh, I want to do this to having done it is doing it, doing it. There's no, there's no magical, like no one's gonna be like, Oh my gosh, I just look at you and know that you would be an amazing author. Here's a six book deal. Now you can write them. Right. Like you have to do it first. You have to do it first. And then everything comes afterwards. Right. Like, um, yeah, I mean with the podcast like that, I want to start, you can plan it as much as you want. Mm -hmm. You can make the Instagram, you can, you know, plan out your first episode, but then you have to do it. You have to record it and <laughs> you then you have, have to, to put re- it out there. You have to put and it out there. And it's nerve wracking. And especially with this one, like I, my co-host and I, like we didn't know if anyone was going to listen to it or if anyone was going to think it was cool. Like when we made the first post, both of us were like, is this cringy? Like, are people going to judge us for it? Like we were just, of course you picture the worst. You picture people sending it around in their group chats being like, what is this? But now it's, this is episode 71. Like we've been going for so long and like, it's just, it's been so much fun and so fulfilling. And I've made so many connections because of it. And it's just a passion project. If we had two listeners every week, I would probably still do it because I love to talk, but it's just fun. It's fun to have a creative outlet. And as far as physical activity, I've gone through that phase so many times Mm -hmm. and I've had different ups and downs with you know, my relationship to food and fitness and overdoing it and and finally getting to a good place where you do it because it's good for your body Mm -hmm. and because you enjoy it and Mm -hmm. the mental health benefits. It's just so fulfilling to be able to go and not care. Like calories doesn't matter. It's not to work off a meal. It's not a punishment. It's just because you go and you want to feel good. And especially in the summertime, you can go outside. Like it's just so it, it's almost like, well, yeah. Didn't you know that? But you forget. But you forget. After just a like, long winter. After reading a good book, mm-hmm. I forget how good it is. How, yeah, how much you love to how read. How much I love to read. Mm-hmm. And I play Sims. Yep. I'm like, oh my God, I forgot how much I love this. But I love what you said about like, for one, chills talking about like, you think everyone hates you because you hate yourself. Like it's true. And I think even, even if we're not going to take it that far to say like you hate yourself, then maybe you don't like yourself or you're insecure about something. Mm-hmm. So you think everyone's like, I have always struggled with my skin. So like, oh, everyone thinks I have awful skin. Everyone's staring at it. It's like, no, no. you just notice that. You just, yep. And if you think you're talking too much, you think this is because you've been told you talk you're too much. You're your own biggest critic. Yes. Always. Yes. And back to the thing you said about like them sending your podcast in group chats or whatever. I think about that with my writing all the time. Mm-hmm. Like when I first started my blog, I was like, oh my God, mm-hmm. <laughs> people are going to be like, she's mentally ill, yeah. which I am. Yeah. But yeah, this is my outlet. This is my thing. Exactly. And you don't have to read it. You don't have to listen to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually remember one of my first blog posts I put out, someone like messaged me on my like Wix site app mm-hmm. and they were like, you're literally schizophrenic, like get help. And I was like, Oh, so um, thank you. I was like, thanks. That's actually not at all what's going on. So. No. And that didn't affect me, yeah. but I was just kind of like, Oh my God. I like, know people are really going to say anything. But I also think if they had hobbies of their own, if they were pursuing what they wanted to pursue, they wouldn't have the time to be messaging no. you. And I know that is such a cliche piece of like, they're only doing that because they're jealous, sweetie. Like no, it sounds it's, like it's that. True. And if you were genuinely pursuing what you want to do, you don't have the time. Like I'm not looking at anybody else's stuff looking like, what are they doing? Like what's no. she doing with her life? Because I, one, know how fulfilling it is and how scary it is to pursue things that you actually enjoy. But also I'm my focus is on what I love to do, like my business, on my fitness, reading, drawing, like all these things that bring me joy. That's mm-hmm. where my attention goes. So if yeah. I'm scrolling through Instagram, I'm not looking for reasons to be upset. That's like no. just an, an auxiliary hobby. Yeah. I don't know. I think people can be professional haters sometimes, but I just feel bad for them because everyone has something they want to do. Like everybody yep. has a dream or like they want to be an influencer. They want to be a blogger. They want to mm-hmm. be a podcaster. They want to write books, whatever it is, but everyone has that like initial hurdle you have to get over. Yep. So if someone, their only 
I guess, relationship to other people is to bring them down and to try and like critique what they have going on. It just makes me sad because they're, they're no closer to acting on what they want to do and what they love. Exactly. That would be a really sad way to live Mm -hmm. considering that's what brings me the most joy. Yeah. (laughs) It's like the self-expression. And I, I'm so proud of you for realizing this at such a young age, like to put yourself out there and kind of break free of those confines that the rest of us, like sometimes you just carry later into life and you realize way too late that you could have been putting it all out there and like having all this fun and freedom. Yeah. But I mean, seeing your media helps me. Mm -hmm. It does. Like, like I said, I've been following you for years. Mm -hmm. Seeing you like pursue all this and post whatever you want, post about your interests. I'm like, oh my God, I can do that too. That makes me so happy. It really, seriously. like, y- you have impacted me. Mm, that makes me so happy, <laughs> seriously. I, I feel like it's one of those things that you, it was for me like a slow drip. Like I'll, I'll test the waters, like put something like a little weird out there and then something a little weird out there. And one, the more confident you get in yourself, the less you really care because exactly. it's like, okay, the I'd say a post gets like 18 likes. Doesn't really matter. Like okay. if you think about it, like, yeah, it might be like, Oof, like I thought it was cool. Right. <laughs> but like it's it's such a cyclical effect because I'll post something that I think is cool. And if it doesn't get that many views, it doesn't matter because I think it's cool anyways. Yep. So then I don't feel insecure about it versus before if I'm posting something that I think is going to like go in the FYP or like get trend or something. It's not something that I care about or I'm proud of or I'm passionate about. It's just something that I think fits this algorithm. Mm-hmm. So whenever it tanks, it's like, oh, like, come on. Like, I don't even like it. I I'm posted it. I'm sick of the algorithm. Same. <laughs> I'm sick Same. of it all. Same. And that's why, like, now I don't I don't use hashtags. I don't care. I just, right. I just post what I want to post. Exactly. And, and then I don't care even more about the views or the the plays or, like, whatever I happen to get analytics-wise because I like that piece of media. Mm-hmm. So then it just perpetuates the cycle of me wanting to post more of what I like yeah. and not caring about it. So it just, I don't know, it, it does continue, but you have to break the cycle eventually and yes. just stop caring, yeah. which is easier said than done. Right? Yes, Everything's easier said than done. And guess what? You'll lose followers. I've it, lost so many. I've lost so many. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and it's because I'm posting more of what I like. Yes. And they're like, this is not what I followed you for. Yeah. I don't care. Yep. New ones will come in. Yeah. Being weird online and getting married are like the two biggest things that will cause you to lose followers. So me, I've taken hits. But I've also gotten a lot of fun new followers. Exactly. And I and I get to meet friends like you. Like yep. I would never have connected with you if I hadn't been posting authentic things and you hadn't either. Yep. We would just be two girls posting like right. OOTDs. <laughs> I don't even <laughs> remember the first time. I think I DM'd you one time and I was like, hey, I really like your content. Um, I'd love to Aww. talk to you sometime. I don't even Aww. remember the first time we talked. <laughs> it's probably still there. It's probably Honestly, still there. I mean, I reply to everyone's story like we're best friends, especially right. like when the sun shines on me in the morning and my coffee hits. I'm like, oh, I love oh my everything. God. I love you. <laughs> yeah. Then then an hour later, I'm anxious. I have 15 messages to reply to. I don't open them. It, yeah. And never respond. So that's like my daily routine. That's actually my worst flaw. I'd say that's my one. What do they call it? Your vice. Mm-hmm. I am so bad at responding messages. Yeah, yeah. You have to text me 15 times before I and answer. And that's, it, it's not personal. Just respond. No, it's not personal. Because sometimes I put it down, forget to pick it back up. And that's yeah. okay. I never understood bad texting until I got older. And I'm like. No, I'll read it and I'll be like, I don't have the mental capacity to yeah. answer you right now. Yeah. Or like I need to think of something or check mm-hmm. something before I can respond to you. Or you read it at the stoplight, trying not to text and drive. Even like my best down. friends, I don't answer them for yep. a week. <laughs> or you do that thing where I'm like, I'm not texting right now. I'm finishing up this task. Mm-hmm. Then you have a pause in the task. You get online. You send them like a dm and i'm like oh i'm the worst yep. but that's fine first world problems i guess anyway okay do you have any closing thoughts anything that you want to uh address any anything oh you want to throw out there um no pressure i'm like i remember i was coming into this i was like i have so much to say mm-hmm. and now that i'm here i'm like deer in headlights like, it happens what am I every about? time like yeah, the week whenever especially I do solo episodes like I'll be talking oh, yeah. in my head like podcasting the whole week like I'm gonna say this I'm gonna yeah. say this don't think to write it down because I'm like oh, it's in my head like I'll come right. up with it the second you stare into that light it's like, like all thoughts escape your head I guess I'll say one thing um this I have not mentioned on social yeah. media before uh, but I'm writing a book right now it's in the works. Amazing. And I'm so excited. We got the exclusive. You got the exclusive. <laughs> it's it's probably going to be a long process. Well, of course, and a yeah. Long time That's coming. incredible. But I, I've been talking about writing a book for so long. And, and my dad it. was like, just sit down and write it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. He's like, oh, right. Yes. <laughs> right. Okay. Yes. Uh-huh. That's the most important part. Makes sense. So I'm typing away. That's incredible. It's very, it's very. Is like, there anything you want to share about it or do you want to keep it like um, mysterious? So I will say it's not like any type of like fiction. It's more of a um, collection of essays and poems. Mm-hmm. I love so that. So kind of like, I don't know if like you've read the book, 101 Essays That'll Change Your Life. I've heard of it. Yeah, I haven't It's read a it. good book. It's kind of inspired by that, but just kind of mixed, you know, 
blog style, you know, my blogs, that. like blog style entries as well as poetry, like the thing on my Instagram. That's so it's beautiful. You guys heard it. Here That's first. so exciting. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I will expect a copy. Oh, absolutely. Signed. signed. <laughs> <laughs> Literally signed. I got me. That's amazing. I hope you stick with it. And same with your hundred days of running consecutive yeah. or not. That's something to be proud of. And, and you owe it to yourself just to pursue yeah. wholeness and happiness and all of those things so oh my god wait do you watch the bachelor no <sighs> i don't i know yeah. my media capacity is like over uh, the limit. same as my iphone storage <laughs> all right like at its limit well i know shout out though people might listen here people might watch um guys i just want to say that i really love daisy and after the last episode daisy and kelsey they just really warmed my heart and mm-hmm. it was it was just really sweet you need to go look at the tiktoks of it even okay. if you haven't seen that I'll do it. do it. I like to be involved. I get bad FOMO. So okay. yeah, that's all. That's fantastic. Well, I'm so glad you came on. I'll tag Thank all of you your so socials much. and everything. All 18 of your projects. So people can <laughs> check it out. All my passion projects yes. that are like halfway done. Yeah. Thank you for having me. No, on. thank you for coming. You're amazing. You're amazing. Love you, Lance. Love you. <laughs>